2010, Israeli Ambassador to the United States Michael Oren spoke at University of California, Irvine. His speech was interrupted by Palestinian students yelling anti-Zionist sentiments. It is a great honor to address such a diverse crowd. Police escorted protesters out of the room and lawsuits and criminal charges followed. This event and similar events across the University of California campuses prompted system-wide President Mark Udoff to send fact-finding teams to observe what he calls campus climate. One of the teams recommended banning hate speech earlier this summer. The fact-finding team that had been tasked uh, with investigating the climate on campus for Jewish students uh, released a series of recommendations that the UC system look into banning hate speech. And even if such a ban were to precipitate a legal challenge, which it surely would, that the system, the university system, accept the challenge. That is, willingly, deliberately violate the First Amendment. Will Creeley of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education says that banning any speech can do more harm than good. When you ban speech, it has a funny habit of boomeranging back at you. Instead of pulling these often noxious or repellent ideas out uh, from behind closed doors and debating them in open sunlight, you see uh, these kinds of ideas silenced. And that kind of silencing uh, builds a kind of repression, hate, fear, paranoia. Creeley doesn't think hate speech should be left alone. He just thinks it should be dealt with in ways other than official censorship and suppression. The answer to silencing speech is more speech. We think that Jewish students, Muslim students, students of all creeds, faiths, colors, national origins, religions, sexualities uh, can be trusted to defend their own point of view. That's why many members of the UC community have come out against the ban. This petition has now reached over 2,000 signatures, including Jewish students, who the ban would supposedly be helping. Concerned members of the UC Jewish community had raised their own worries about uh, projecting the Jewish community as a monolithic group in need of special protection and didn't want the First Amendment curtailed in their name. It's been suggested that carving out a particular exception to the First Amendment for the purported benefit of Jewish students is in essence a kind of condescension towards them. You can't handle this speech by yourself. Uh, better to call on the authorities and they'll ban it for you. President Udoff does seem to be taking this into consideration. And in a response to concerned members of the Jewish community, he said, quote, I must say, however, that I believe our current policies may go as far as they can. We think that those signals are encouraging. But President Udoff is still considering the recommendations, and while he does so, constitutional liberties are at stake. We need to be vigilant about threats to First Amendment freedoms on campuses. Our public universities are absolutely crucial for the future and the health of our democracy. If we do not educate students uh, in their rights, in their First Amendment liberties, and the importance of freedom of speech for our democracy, we risk losing that knowledge forever. Once it's gone, it's awfully hard to get back.